executive. Um, and I'm uh, really glad to tell you more about what that is later. But uh, I, I, I'm just um, really happy we have a fire pit outside and we've been working with that. That's all I have. And I'll pass it to Justin. Hey, so my name is Justin. I've been a chaos contributor for a couple of years. Uh, I work with the DNI working group mostly, but I also work in other open source projects like the Fedora project, uh, some open open music projects, and also UNICEF Aquas of Innovation projects. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Amy. Amy said if she doesn't respond, she's in the kitchen. So we'll come back to Amy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then I'll throw it to Matt G. Hi, everybody. So I'm Matt German Prey. I'm a professor uh, at the University of Nebraska Omaha. I'm also one of the founders and board members of the Chaos Project. And uh, I, it's, it's like super cold and misty right now, which is like the, it's that stuff that cuts right to the core of your. <laughs> body. I'm looking at Dawn as somebody who lives in the UK. <laughs> like it's not technically that cold, but somehow it just <laughs> goes yeah, right. The damp makes a difference. Sure. Uh, well, Dawn, you're unmuted. So. Okay. Uh, so I'm Dawn Foster. I do open source community strategy at VMware. Um, I'm on the governing board of the chaos project. Um, I do random other, other stuff. I have a passion for DEI. That's why I'm here. Um, how about uh, Vinod? Hello, everyone. I'm Vinod uh, Ahuja. I'm a doctoral student at University of Nebraska, Omaha. And I'm a regular contributor to Chaos, and I do my research in open source space. And I'm also, uh, uh, I have started joining the, yeah, Automotive Grid Linux Foundation open source project also exploring that domain. So that's all about me. And I had the morning walk in this mist uh, and it was lovely. I enjoyed. <laughs> and I will pass to uh, the Sion Winmi. Uh, I don't know, I have pronounced the name. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Shion Fumi Adegoki. I'm currently a final year student studying petroleum engineering, and I'm prepping for my Linux examination. And I also am currently learning French using Duolingo. So it's nice to meet you all. Welcome, welcome. We're really happy that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Um, and I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager. So you'll see me at most of the meetings around and you'll see the occasional email from me on the mailing list and such and newsletters and whatnot. Um, my other job, which is not super uh, busy right now, is uh, being a nature photographer. So I go to art shows and things like that on the weekends. Now that they're all coming back after COVID, I'm very excited about that. Uh, so that's me. And um, I think we, we hit everyone except for Amy. So Amy, if you come back and you want to just pop in. Oh, there she is. Hooray. Hi, Amy. I'm back. Then I'm going to go off camera to actually eat. Um, my name is Amy Marish. I'm a member of the Chaos Governing Board as well as a board member for the Open Infrastructure Foundation. Um, I also chair the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group for OIF, and I'm starting to do some DNI stuff for CentOS. Oh, and I'm technically a principal technical marketing manager at Red Hat, focusing on OpenStack, though I seem to do more upstream and community stuff than marketing. So I still consider myself more a community person than a marketing person. That's it. Thank you, everyone. And I'm really glad you're here. I thought everyone's here. This is great. Um, okay, so uh, the first item on our agenda is to talk about the Chaos DNI um, internal reflection project that we're doing. And I don't know if uh, Justin or Matt want to talk a little about that. Or I can. <laughs> Either one. I can I can talk about it a bit. Perfect. So 
the process is slowly coming together. We're hoping to have a more concrete update at the beginning of April once we start the actual um, the reflection work and trying to map out how we're going to conduct this audit. But so far, we have two folks that were in the process of onboarding, and we're waiting for a response from two more folks. Um, so things are slowly moving. There's not a whole lot to update on right now, but um, we're in the process of bringing on some other folks. So they'll probably be joining these meetings um, or just a, a couple of them to get to know folks. So uh, be on the, uh, on the lookout for that, hopefully within the next month or so. Um, so we should have some new folks joining the call and wanting to get to know you and what we're doing here on the team. Over. I'll add that I think in the last meeting, I wasn't able to make it, but Justin, you and Elizabeth and other folks had worked on kind of setting up some of the like infrastructure, like documents, <laughs> should I say, to help organize the work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I have the notes document that I'll, um, I'll share the link here in the Zoom chat if folks want to take a look at it. There's not a whole lot there yet, but that'll be our like our working place, just like we have the DNI working group note stock. That'd be cool. And then I was chatting with Kevin about how, as the like nine months down the road or whatever, eight months down the road, when um, kind of results uh, come out and um, the, the things that we are um, kind of proposing that other communities can do, you know what I mean? Like guides that other communities could engage with uh, to do a similar process. He and I just started the conversation about how we can get those on the website and what that might look like. In case anyone, awesome. um, yeah, doesn't know what that all means. Uh, just a quick rundown. We are doing an internal review of kind of our, our DNI practices within the chaos project. And one of the goals of that is to be able to offer some assistance to other open source projects that would like to also go through an internal audit and see where they can be better um, and more attentive to um, DEI practices and, and policies and actions, behaviors, and things like that. So um, that's where that's all coming from. Uh, any questions on that? For me, Matt, or Justin? Rock on, let's move ahead. Uh, oh yes, we should pick a facilitator for next week. So who would like to do that? As you can tell, it is does well, not take a lot. No, of I, expertise in anything. I can do it. Thank you, Matt. Uh, okay, moving on then. Oh, I'm. Oh, you're adding your name. Thank you. The next item says diversity as regards to bandwidth for conferences, and I think that that was um, something that we talked about last meeting uh, that Ruth had brought up. Um, Ruth is a regular uh, attendee here at this DNI meeting, but unfortunately she's not here today. Um, we had started uh, talking about this, like what that means, the the um, accessibility in terms of bandwidth, people's ability to get online and to have good bandwidth to watch either watch videos or um, attend those live stream events or give a talk of their own that can be um, severely limiting for your opportunities if you don't have access to uh, a high speed bandwidth. So um, there's a doc in the minutes which we can look at um, if we want to do that now, uh, just for a minute, if we want to just so everybody kind of knows where we where we landed with that. I don't think we did a whole lot of work. I don't remember actually. I know we had a lot of discussions, but yeah, we didn't yeah, get a ton in there. Okay, it was mostly just just chatting about what that means. So um, I think maybe we could move this to the end of the agenda. If we have time, we can actually work in this document. Would that be okay with everyone? Because we do have a few other things to to chat about. Okay. I see a couple thumbs up, so let's do that. So um, hold this thought, <laughs> let that marinate in your brain for a little bit while we talk about other things um, and move forward, just it will come back to that. Um, so the next one is says badging. Is there an open request that could use a bit of encouragement? Uh, Did I spell Matt that? S yeah, no, my, uh, the, 
the Google Doc was blocking that word. I couldn't see the little flags of who's doing writing. Oh, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, this is AI Matt Snell. Reach out to Kevin to update the reviewers list. But I, Matt, is there also an outstanding request for a badge that I know that you had reassigned a reviewer and then I think the new reviewer had made some suggestions and I'm not sure if there was a response to that at all. I just haven't looked. You're muted, Matt. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I was hardware muted. Uh, so I have, uh, um, I, I just got an email. I've been keeping track of that and keeping an eye on it. And then I got an email from Gemma, who is the reviewer that's working on that now, that um, that she didn't get any response. I kind of told her, if you want to send something out, you can or else I can definitely take over on that if you want. So I'm waiting. I, I'm waiting on her to do something or just tell me that I can do something. You just um, at this point, out of the out of the issue, that might be the easiest thing to do. Out of the issue? Yeah, just tag him again. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like email him. No, no, I can tag him again. Yeah, I can do that yeah. right now. I just wanted to make sure I gave Gemma the control on that if she wanted that. Gotcha. Okay. Has this been resolved? Then are we good to go ahead? Okay. Okay, awesome. So the next uh, item on here says update speaker demographics metric to include an explicit focus on the processes by which keynote or invited speakers are identified. This should also update to the badging program and there is a link. I'm not sure who put this in here. Me. So based on kind of long standing conversations, I think that you and I have had Elizabeth with respect to keynote speakers and how uh, DEI is handled with respect to like direct outreach or invited speakers. Um, right now, the speaker demographics uh, metric, I think, pretty much only focuses on like attendees, or I'm sorry, on, on speakers like that have papers accepted, not keynote speakers that are invited. And so I thought maybe we could update the metric just to talk about keynotes, maybe it's in there, maybe I just missed it. And then also then update the badging program so that when an event is uh, discussing how they do speaker demographics, they can also talk to um, how they do invited speakers, how they attend invited speakers. That's what that is. It does have it as a, a filter um, under keynotes, sessions and tracks. Um, so that might, at least in the metric itself. Gotcha. Would that, yeah, and then under objectives, it does mention keynotes. Do you think that that's enough or do you want to like bring it out explicitly since it's a, kind of a different process, usually anyway? I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what others think. Or not think. There's the metric in question. I just dropped it in the chat. I can sh share my screen if that's more helpful too. I'm always afraid I'm going to share the wrong. Oh, I thing, have that all the time. All, <laughs> all the time. Because <laughs> especially since I have eight thousand tabs open. Uh, You can do it. We can remember. We can always edit the videos <laughs> after if, if you put something on the screen. I guess while you're doing that, do people think it's important to? Oh, there you go. To maybe highlight keynote speaker demographics and processes around that. Or do you think this is all good? Hang on, reading. I can get it open.
I will say I get a lot of emails lately to talk at places, but they're basically going off the fact that my LinkedIn says bored because it's all we're looking for CTOs and this and that. So there is some interesting background on how keynotes are chosen. I also have heard the comment and have also experienced this myself as to um, you get that feeling that the only reason that you're being asked is because you fit a certain demographic and it doesn't quite flow with the rest of the, it seems very like a token. Um, and so I, I don't know if we need to say something about that in here. Um, I, I don't know how you, how you kind of check for that because usually it's just kind of a feeling that you get <laughs> as the person who is the one being asked. Um, I, I don't know. I think it would take some time to kind of uh, figure out how to um, put that into words, something that we could look for. I don't know. Yeah, because you, you want the best well-rounded candidate and you do want diversity on your stage, but you shouldn't just pick someone because the check off box A or check box B, they should check off A, B, C, and D. Um, now, mind you, that pool of candidates is smaller than if you just went with C and D. Um, so one thing we're doing internally within Red Hat is trying to put together not just a speakers bureau, which has already women on it, but a way of onboarding new women and getting them speaking engagements. So... Do we know of any lists of diverse speakers that could be, you know, a diverse speaker bureau, speaking bureau, I guess would be the way of saying it. I mean, does something like that exist? It's not necessarily our place to start one though. I also think it's interesting to look at the, the pool of people that's choosing the speakers. Um, like if, if their demographics kind of match up to you know, if you have a diverse group who's choosing the group, then that also is like a deeper level of, of diversity, I think, and inclusion. Um, and it feels, at least in my experience, it feels less like, oh, the reason they asked me is because I'm a woman. Um, if I know that the group that's choosing the papers or choosing the talks is also diverse, it feels a little more genuine, <laughs> a little more, you know, like, oh, hey, we really care about what you have to say, <laughs> not, you know, what you you how you identify but so um that might be something we could look at i don't know what y'all think about that i think that's a good idea i've been jotting these down in the minutes here so so i put um pool of yeah in the minutes the top of page two describe the pool of people who are selecting the keynote speakers which i think is what you were getting at elizabeth and then yeah describe how the selection process ensures that the implementation is not simply a signal of dei something like that yeah i like that a lot what does everyone else think I'm not sure I like the word description of the panel and I'm circling around because I know there's a really good word and I, I want to say makeup, um, but something that reflects that, but at the same time isn't saying you need to, I don't know, composition of the selection panel. Does, does that sound more grown up? <laughs> Maybe that's where I'm going. <laughs> I want it to be more grown up sounding. Lord. I like that, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that can, constitutes a separate metric altogether or if that's something that we just add to the speaker demographic metric that we already have. The easiest thing would obviously just be to add it here and then yeah in the badging process, Matt, you might have to add something that's kind of explicit, not just about paper submitters, but also about the keynote process. Yeah, I think having an open and transparent keynote process is what I'm kind of getting out of this. Yeah, I think so. Hi, Nicole. And 
I'm also kind of wondering if it shouldn't just be for the keynotes, but the sessions as well. Absolutely. So what do you mean by that, Amy? So we go speakers are diverse when grouped by keynote sessions and tracks but the composition of the group selecting those sessions, those tracks, and those keynotes should be diverse as well. I get what you're saying. Okay, so then composition of pool of people who are selecting keynote speakers as well as conference tracks, like that. And what are, let me just get a clarification. What's the difference between a session and a track? Are they not the same track chairs? It's probably just me in the academic space. They're generally called tracks. Okay. No, because we have tracks, track chairs. Tracks are, track tracks chairs are groups of sessions, sessions in the chair in the tracks. Yeah. So tracks are groups of sessions. And I think when we originally started writing this metric, the idea was that if all of your diverse speakers are, for example, in the diversity and inclusion track, that is probably not a win. So I think that's why we start, that's why we included tracks in there. Okay, so is tracks the right word in what I have here? So composition of the pool of people who are selecting the keynote speakers, as well as the conference tracks. And sessions. Tracks, okay. Gotcha. So something that's been um, kind of asked about a lot in the review orientation sessions, I think it's important to put up here too, is that um, like we've had organizations come up with different levels of like diversity in their project when they're talking about showing their demographics and things like that. But um, what we're really in the badging project, what we're really aiming for is to measure that, um, that they're measuring it, that they're trying to improve on it. Um, so I, I'm thinking almost less about um, how having uh, measuring the diversity of the, the, the selection committee for the speakers and more about um, making sure that they keep it transparent and have a process that people can understand before they go and apply. I don't know. So just like, even just something as stated on the conference webpage that says, this is our process for selecting keynotes. And this is our process by which we, you know, select tracks. And yeah, I think, I think that into those. The direction that we've gone with this, um, with this badging project, is that we want to um, we want to see people in trying to improve, at least trying to improve, and a lot of that comes from the transparency aspect of it. I mean, a lot of the things you can do a review on can be found on the website most of the time, or or if they're not, then they have to put them on the website so they can get that checkbox checked off, that kind of thing. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, how about I'll take an action item to try to at least update the current metric with these additions. We can talk about it next okay. week. And then Matt, based on like the acceptance of that, then it would have a effect on the badging program, I think. Yep, and then we're doing a release on um, the end of this month. So okay. that would be great. And I put the question in the channel, but the document refers to repeat speakers. Do we also wanna keep track of the new speakers? to make sure that they're just not always picking the same speakers so that we're getting new blood in there as well? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Other final comments on this or thoughts? Thank you everybody for the feedback. Awesome. Okay, so, um, oh, I guess that was the last one. So now we can go back to the diversity as regards to bandwidth for conferences, since we do have about 20 minutes left. And we can work on that doc if everyone's cool with that, um, unless there's other things we want to talk about. Uh, okay. Uh, Matt, do you want to pause the recording while we work on this doc, or do you